And now with a preview of tonight's game and a look at what's happening at the ballpark. It's time for the Ameren, Illinois, and ActonEnergy.com pregame show. Let's send it down to the field and check in with the voice of the Chiefs, Nathan Beliva. Thank you, Brett. We are down in front of the Chiefs dugout with Chiefs Countdown presented by Ameren, Illinois. And today on our PeoriaMagazines.com interview, I've got Steve Moritz, one of our coaches, a scout with us as well, a first base coach, and a couple of big games ready here now. Four games left. We'll take a look at the standings in a few minutes here. But uh, getting a win yesterday in game one, unfortunately not in game two, but right into the, uh, the thick of the playoff race, one game back with four to play. And as Joe said over the weekend, that's why we play the first half is to have meaningful games in the last week, hopefully meaningful games in the last week of August as well. So that's got to be the mindset going through your clubhouse right now. Yeah, I think uh, any time at the beginning of the year, if you, you know, mentioned the chances of us being in the thick of things with four to go, you know, we'd be happy with that. So, uh, like I said, one game back, four to go. It's kind of an exciting time making a playoff push here. Rain out on a Tuesday, so we had the doubleheader yesterday. From your perspective, a uh, coach's point of view, what are those two days like? Let's start with the rain out. Obviously, we didn't get any batting practice or anything going on. It rained pretty much all day long. I know you guys are still doing work inside, though. So talk to me a little bit about what's going on inside, under underground, behind the scenes, while uh, it's just out here raining. Really, up until they uh, canceled the game, it was a normal day for us, uh, other than not hitting on the field. Um, we got our early work in, uh, in the cage where we can really break down some swings if guys need it, um, get some hands-on interaction, and really focus in on some individual time uh, and whatever they need, whatever the individual player needs, whether it's a mechanical issue, uh, whether it's some sort of mental approach. Um, you know, again, we get really individual with it. Um, and then, like I said, really up until, other than hitting on the field right, until the game was canceled. It was a normal day for us. And then uh, on the flip side, yesterday, an extra long day, a double yeah. header. So 5 o'clock, everything starts early. And with 14 innings, do you kind of dial back uh, the, the pregame stuff so the guys aren't exhausted by the time we get to that 13th, 14th inning? Or is it just a normal day and, hey, go play two? Yeah, I don't think we really dial anything back. I, I think, um, you know, we're conscious of, of the fact we're playing 14 innings. Um, but I, I think the guys do a really good job of mentally preparing and getting their bodies ready for uh, just a longer day. Um, it's it's still two games, and it's still got to go out there and perform. Um, you know, so I think it's just a little bit more of the mental approach. Going back to what you said about working in the cage, working with guys, individual, what they might be working on. We've got our hitting coordinator, Derek May, former Peoria chief, is is in town for this series, and obviously Joe Bell Jimenez now uh, back with us uh, here at home. So when it, it comes down to that, how does it work? Is it do you guys go up to a player and say, hey, we saw this over the last couple of games. Let's work on it. Do players come up to you and say, I really feel like I'm struggling with this. Can you help me with it? Or is it a little bit of both? It's, it's, it's a two-way street, 100%. Uh, I think the majority of the time the guys will approach us, um, you know, and, and ask questions. And mainly Joe Bell and V. May, to be honest with you, I'm there just kind of assist those two. Um, but they'll approach us. Um, and, and then there are a couple guys that, you know, if, if D sees something or Joe Bell sees something, that, hey, let's get in the cage and get a couple extra hacks uh, here or there. You know, they'll do it. So it's a two-way street. And again, it, it, it works both ways. On the scouting side of things for you, because that's still a, a good portion yeah. of the uh, of the job of what you're doing, even though right. you've been filling in it at first base over the last few weeks. We're starting to see some of these teams now two and, and three times. How does that uh, affect? I, I would imagine it makes your job a little easier because you don't have to write up a guy on just seeing him pitch one inning or seeing him take right. two at bats. Now you've got more of a, uh, a, a platform uh, of which to write about. Yeah, no, it, it definitely it makes you feel more comfortable. Um, it, the bottom bottom line for me being a first year scout is, is the comfort. You know, if I see a guy for five or six innings, I might have one idea of what I think he is. But that I get to see him come through again, that just helps me feel more confident in what I'm seeing or what I believe. So it really, in my shoes, it's more of a comfort um, feel to the whole scouting realm, if you will. And uh, the coaching first base part of it, I know uh, originally that's probably not what you thought you'd be doing. So what's that a adjustment been like for you now that we're, uh, you know, three weeks or so into to you being out there coaching first? It's been awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's been great. Uh, you know, I, I, I did it for seven or eight years, whether I was coaching first or third at the collegiate level. And getting to be back on the field, you know, at first it was kind of, you know, I guess like riding a bike. It took me a couple, couple games to get back in the flow of things. And, and now I feel comfortable again. And it's just been a great um, it's been refreshing for me, you know, and it's been great to be with the guys during the game because as we spoke last time, that was the hardest part about the job. Right. Because I'm with these guys, you know, up until the game, and then once the game starts, I'm back up there and not in there. And so getting to be in the dugout 
again, talking with Joe Bell and D Maid and seeing the guys and interacting with them and getting on the field. It's been it's been a lot of fun. I've did, really enjoyed did, it. Uh, did Vaughn thank you for the uh, the triple for you going <laughs> like this in Beloit that you uh, you sold with the, you sold that with the body English. I think. Yeah, yeah, I did my best. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that ball's about three feet foul, but uh, we'll take it. <laughs> hey, it was sure. a, that was a fair ball triple into the corner. That's 100%. how it looks. That's why I pointed that way. That's yeah. right. That's exactly why we look uh, look to the All Star break. Don't want to look too far ahead because obviously we have four very important games. But All Star break for you, uh, just I'm sure, just like these guys, a chance to go home and refresh the batteries and and see the family before we start back up in Quad Cities one week from today. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. I'm going to go home see. Uh, See the wife and the dog and, and the niece and mom and dad and everybody. And, again, kind of get, get away for a couple of days, recharge batteries, and get ready for a, uh, a great second half. You know, I, we, I know when we talked last time up here, I talked to you about seeing some guys that you knew or that you coached yeah. with or yeah. coached against. There's actually a guy over in the other uh, dugout that not only is a former chief, uh, but a former player of yours and, and Tim Saunders, who yeah. unfortunately for us had a big double in an RBI last night. But it's got to be uh, be cool for you now to get to see him for the first time. Yeah, it is. Uh, I got to talk to Timmy real quick the other day before, uh, actually on the rain out. We spoke real quick to say hello. It's been a couple years since I saw him. But it's it's been it's been fun to watch these guys that I've coached, you know, progress and become professionals and, and kind of pay attention to their career. And uh, you know, there's a couple other guys in the league that I'm pretty close with. And, and again, you see Timmy, uh, you know, have the success he has so far through his career. It's it's been rewarding. It's been neat. And we uh, I know you're excited. We talked promotions. You told me yesterday you're excited about one on the uh, next homestand, the yeah. Saturday night Star, uh, Wars, Star Wars right? night. Yeah. yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, you know, I'm uh, I'm not a Star Wars guy per se, but. Wear a different uniform, be kind of fun. Yeah, so look for you. I know you love the uh, the, the tie dye with the uh, the cancer. So there you that's go. Why. That's, that's what you wanted. <laughs> Almost was your baseball card, by the way. Just a couple <laughs> weeks too late. Steve, uh, thanks for joining us. I know you got some stuff to do. Appreciate it, and uh, let's get some wins, and then enjoy that yeah, all star break. Uh, hopefully, make a playoff push right here. Thanks all for right, having thanks, me. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Steve Moore, it's our first base coach and a uh, scout with the Chiefs and the Cardinals as well, joining us here on the pregame show, the Chiefs Countdown. Presented by Ameren, Illinois. As we get going tonight, let's actually, since we just talked about the playoff picture, let's take a look at those standings here in the Western Division with the four games left to go last night. The Chiefs split games against Kane County while Burlington won and Quad Cities lost. So you'll see there on the standings, Kane County has already clinched one of the two playoff spots. The Chiefs are one game behind Burlington with these four games to go. Burlington tonight is playing at Clinton. And then Clinton, who was eliminated last night, will be here for the final three games, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So four left. The Chiefs need to get the four wins, catch up with Burlington in those standings to wrap up a wild card spot here for the first half. Speaking of that series against Clinton, we've got a lot going on in those three games. Let's get to those first and take a look at tomorrow, Friday night, the Ozzie Smith bobblehead. will give those away for the first 1,000 fans through the gates tomorrow night. The Ozzy Smith bobblehead, also part of a big fireworks night here at the ballpark with a 7 o'clock start against Clinton for the Friday fireworks in the Ozzy Smith bobblehead. Speaking of Ozzy Smith, he will be here on Saturday, the IPMR Legend of the Ballpark night. Ozzy Smith will be here. He'll throw out a first pitch. He'll sign autographs as well, all the money for that going to IPMR with their legend at the ballparks night. We also have fireworks on Saturday, which is a 6.30 start, so back-to-back -back fireworks nights on Friday and Saturday and all night long on Saturday, Dueling Pianos. The guys from Spanky Entertainment down in St. Louis will be back their fourth year in a row with us here at Dozer Park. We'll have a piano on top of each dugout. They'll play pregame. They'll play throughout the entire game. They'll play during the fireworks show, and then they'll take requests and play after the fireworks as well. We've got a lot going on Sunday to finish off the half. It's a 2 o'clock start on Sunday. Gates open at 1 o'clock. Right wing gates open. Fans can come down on the field and play catch in the outfield. And then the Chiefs players will sign autographs here at 1.15 on Sunday. And we've got a lot to give away on Sunday as well. It is Father's Day, so we have a Peoria Chiefs grill set to give away to the first 1,000 fathers in attendance on Sunday. Then Alex Reyes, who got a complete game victory here yesterday, we will have a poster, Peoria Journal Star Alex Reyes poster to give away 1,000 of those on Sunday as well. And Spider-Man and Iron Man will both be here, part of our superhero day. They'll be at the gates. They'll be throughout the ballpark all game long. They'll be signing autographs, and fans can get their pictures taken with Spider-Man and Iron Man on Sunday. And we'll finish it off with kids running the bases after the game on Sunday, which finishes our first half. Tonight, Thirsty Thursday, sponsored by KISS FM 98.5. Make sure you go up and get those dollar draft beers, dollar fountain sodas all night long. And it's also ladies' night. 
we've got a diamond dig down here on the field, somewhere on the infield. We have five different sets of diamond stud earrings buried on the dirt, so you'll have a chance to sign up for those. If you want to sign up, go up to the Jones Brothers Jewelers table, which is next to Humana Guest Services. You can sign up until 8 o'clock, 18 and over. Females 18 and over can go sign up until 8 o'clock. They will draw 50 names tonight that will get a chance to come out here and dig for those five sets of diamond stud earrings after the game. So make sure you get up to the Jones Brothers Jewelers. It's free to sign up. Get up there if you're 18 and over, female. Go up there and sign up, and 50 will get a chance to come down here and dig for those diamond stud earrings after the game. Other than that, sit back, relax, have some fun with our promo crew, and most importantly, cheer the Chiefs on. Need a big win tonight over Kane County in that playoff race to finish the first half. We thank you for spending your Thursday with us here at Dozer Park.